Between Time Escape Room is the third in a series of escape room games from MC2 Games. You can see my videos for their previous two games here in my channel. This one follows the same principle as its predecessors. You solve a series of logic puzzles to progress from area to area, all of which are tied together loosely with a simple plot. In this one, you're a thief who has stolen a time machine, and you're using it to find and steal treasures from different times to sell when you get home. You're probably not playing a game like this for the plot, though. You're in it for the puzzles. So, how do the puzzles hold up against previous games? Well, they're much more difficult. I breezed through the first game, Palindrome Syndrome, in about two hours with only a couple of brief hiccups along the way. The second game, Tested on Humans, was more difficult, and with Between Time, they've ramped that difficulty way up. Some puzzles are fairly straightforward, some are real brain benders, and honestly, some of them just felt unfair or frustrating. I'm looking at you rotating dice that move at random, making it almost impossible to map them out in your head. I hate you. The game has a hint system for most puzzles, but the hints are hit and miss. In some cases, they tell you something really obvious, which you probably already knew, like where the clue for a password can be found, but offer no insight into how to decipher the clue, which is the part that most people would get stuck on. Some clues simply give you part of the answer, rendering the entire puzzle moot. But the cases I found most frustrating were the ones where the hint was actually a really critical piece of information without which the puzzle couldn't reasonably be solved. Something which should have just been a normal clue hidden somewhere in the level, not locked behind a hint screen, where some players would never see it because they don't want to feel like they're cheating. I can imagine a lot of players getting frustrated with how obtuse some of the puzzles are because some of the critical clues are hidden away in the hint system. The game also suffers from a lot of the same problems as the previous games. In terms of accessibility, there are some puzzles that rely solely on colors, so it is not entirely colorblind friendly. You can rebind all the keys to a mouse and keyboard or gamepad, which is great, but you can't disable mouse smoothing, which is tremendously annoying, though the effect can be reduced by increasing the mouse sensitivity. The game's joystick calibration is really wonky too, and it always feels like it's moving too fast or too slow. After solving each puzzle, there's a long delay where the screen is simply frozen, not displaying anything interesting and not letting you move. The game only saves at the start of each level, so if you solve half the puzzles in a room then quit, you'll have to do them over when you load the game up again. And there's still no in-game system for taking notes or photographs, so be sure you have a notebook to write down clues in. You're definitely gonna need it. So should you get between time? If you enjoy virtual escape rooms and want something truly challenging, and if you can tolerate the clunky controls, then go for it. I finished it in a little over three hours with copious use of the hints system, and if you take your time and try to complete it without hints, it may take you quite a bit longer. But if you get really stuck and it seems like you've run out of clues, don't be afraid to make use of the hints system. Sometimes I think it's really necessary to find a puzzle solution. And hey, if you like virtual escape rooms and you have Minecraft, check out my own escape room maps on Planet Minecraft. The first one's already available, and the second one is on the way. I'll put a link in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.